Here's how you can recreate five of the most iconic bass drum sounds ever. Have you already checked out our platform artofdrumming.com? It's a free platform that offers in-depth drum courses filmed by international top educators. Head over, create your account and get started now. The bass drum is a central and usually the biggest instrument within a drum kit. No matter if you prefer an 18 inch or 26 inch drum, the choice will definitely shape your whole drum sound. Over the years many drummers have come up with all sorts of kick drum sounds, so here are five of the most iconic but very different bass drum sounds. First up is former Slipknot drummer Joey Jordison. His style reset the standards for metal drumming and made him one of the most famous heavy drummers ever. Listen to the original kick drum sound of Before I Forget. What stands out most is a crystal clear attack and that there is no sustain at all. So we need to create a very short and punchy sound. To do that we went with two 22 inch Pearl Decade Maple bass drums. The clear power stroke stock drum heads work perfectly for this sound. Clear heads usually create more attack than coated ones and the dampening ring shortens the sound. For some extra durability we added impact patches on both bass drums. These add even more attack and protect the drum heads from the hard hitting. We then switched to plastic beaters because harder beater material produces more attack than a softer one. The Rezo heads also feature internal dampening rings and have portholes. Both drums are tuned pretty low. To shorten the sustain even more and reduce the overtones, some muffling is needed inside the drums. Make sure the muffling touches both drum heads to get the best result. To record this setup we used two mics per bass drum, a TGD-71 inside the shell to get a very clear attack and a TGD-70 in front of the Rezo head to capture the low end. Here is our Before I Forget bass drum sound. Omar Hakim's credits include numerous world famous artists like Mark Knopfler's band Dire Straits. Their hit single Money For Nothing surely is one of the most famous recordings that feature Omar Hakim's drumming. Before we get into detail, here's the original song. In comparison to Joey Jordison's sound, you hear a lot less attack and a softer touch, but also a very short bass drum sound without any sustain. So right from the start, we know that we'll need some muffling, a softer beater and also a coated instead of a clear drum head. For a sound like this, it's also quite common to uninstall the Rezo head completely. The sound gets a lot drier, it's easier to fit the muffling and placing mics inside the drum is also a lot easier. The kick we use is a 20 inch Yamaha Live Custom and we fitted it with a coated power stroke head. After tuning it to the right pitch, we used a blanket to muffle the batter head from the inside. Once again, we used two microphones to capture the drum. The one on the inside is an old Sennheiser MD421. Compared to the boundary mic we used to get a very clear attack with a lot of highs for Joey Jordison sound, this dynamic mic creates a more mid-range focused signal. This suits the dire straits sound a lot better and paired with a large diaphragm condenser outside the kick for some extra low end, this is what we ended up with. Here's one of the most famous jazz tunes ever, the Dave Brubeck Quartet's Take 5.
Legendary drummer Joe Morello played on this recording and his open drum sound adds some great texture to the whole arrangement. Of course, the huge reverb you hear shapes the drum sound a lot, but you can definitely tell that there is close to no muffling involved and that the bass drum is tuned pretty open. Even though Morello might have played a bigger bass drum, we decided to go with today's standard jazz size, 18 inch. For a warm and open sound like this, we recommend using coated single ply drum heads like these Remo Ambassadors. For an extra soft touch, we went with a fleece covered felt version of the Vic Firth Vic Kick Beater. This one helps to bring out the warmth of the drum and to reduce the initial attack of the beater. To control the batter head just a little, we added one of Remo's crown gels. Here's the tuning of the batter head. For this sound we don't need the attack to be as present as with the two previous ones, so one mic in front of the kick drum is enough. We went with a large diaphragm condenser, a Biodynamic MC840. Placed a few inches away from the rezzo head, the mic is able to capture a very natural image of the drum. The wide frequency range of large diaphragm condenser mics makes these mics perfect for the task. Simon Phillips is one of the most recognizable drummers of the last decades, especially known for his trademark drum sound. For more than 20 years, he shaped the music of the American rock band Toto with his drumming. Here is Toto's song, Gift of Faith. The bass drum sound has a clear attack and a very fat low end. If you look at his regular setup, you'll notice nearly all tom sizes Tama offers and two 24 by 14 inch kick drums. We went through our arsenal of drums and picked the only one we have that has the same size, our PDP Concept Classic. If you go through videos and photos of his setup, you'll notice that he uses clear single ply drum heads on both sides, so we went with clear ambassadors as batter and rezzle head. Before installing the rezzo head, let's talk about the muffling. He usually concentrates most on the batter side. You can see a rolled towel taped against the drum head on many photos and videos, so we did the same. One other trick he often uses in the studio is to place a paint bucket filled with sand inside the drum shell. The extra weight helps to get an even more focused sound. The rezzo head has a porthole to control the sound and enables muffling changes and more mic placement options afterwards. To reduce the overtones of the rezzo head a little, we taped a paper handkerchief to the drum head. Before we listen to the final sound, here's the isolated tuning of both heads. Just as with the first two sounds in this video, we're once again using two mics. A dynamic mic at the porthole pointing at the batter head to capture the attack and a large diaphragm mic to emphasize the low end. Here's our version of Simon Phillips' bass drum sound. When talking about bass drum sound, or drum sound in general, Led Zeppelin's drummer John Bonham has to be mentioned. His powerful drumming inspired many drummers after him and his open sound has become legendary. If you listen to songs like Whole of Love, you can clearly hear the low and open tuned bass drum that works great as a foundation for the song. Bonham is well known for his large Ludwig drums and that he usually played 26 inch kick drums. The closest we have to one of his old Ludwig bass drums is a 26 inch former marching bass drum by Sonor. We fitted the drum with a double ply Remo Emperor head as batter head. The double ply construction offers a good durability 
and still has an open characteristic. An impact patch helps to extend the durability even more and protects the felt beater from the rough surface of the coated drumhead. On the Rezo side, we went with a coated Ambassador drumhead. The single ply head offers the right open quality and to control the sustain and tone, we installed a felt strip for muffling. Here's the tuning of both heads. To capture the attack as well as the open raw quality of this kick drum, we once again went with two microphones. While there is no possibility to place one mic inside the kick drum due to the closed rezo head, we placed the MD421 close to the beater on the batter side. For the low end and to picture the size of the drum, a large diaphragm condenser placed a few inches from the rezo head works best. You need to experiment with the distance to find the sweet spot where the drum really unfolds its full power. Check out our John Bonham bass drum sound. Of course you can use any of the tools we worked with in this video to create your own sound and combine all methods to come up with new ideas. Which bass drum sound do you like the most? And which ones should we include in the second part of this video? Leave a comment and subscribe if you don't want to miss any new videos in the future.